Hey everybody, welcome to my video about the new features and changes coming to iOS 12. In this video, I'm going to talk about the updates, changes, and features we'll be getting in iOS 12 for both iPhone and iPad based on my experience with the iOS 12 public beta. So stay tuned! The first big benefit I've noticed with iOS 12 is the speed. iOS 12 is supposed to be much faster than iOS 11, and I think they're telling the truth on that one. My iPhone 10 on iOS 11 obviously wasn't slow, but it does feel a bit more zippy with iOS 12. The big story for me though was when I put iOS 12 beta on my iPad mini 2. Using iOS 11, my iPad mini 2 was so incredibly slow, I pretty much stopped using it. Now with iOS 12, my iPad mini 2 is so much faster, I've actually been able to start using it again. It's obviously not as fast as my iPhone 10, but it's actually fast enough where I'm not forgetting what I was trying to do when I'm loading an app. I think iOS 12 will really benefit people with older iPhones and iPads. You'll be sure to notice a difference. The next really cool new feature in iOS 12 is a new measure app that uses ARKit 2.0 to help you measure things in three-dimensional space. It's really cool. I don't think it's 100% accurate yet, but when I use it to measure my grande frappuccino, it usually says 10 to 12 centimeters. So it's not too far off. To try this out, you'll need an iOS device that runs an A9 processor or newer, such as an iPhone 6S or later, all iPad Pro models, iPad 5th generation, and iPad 6th generation as well. I can see this new feature really coming in handy. Another new feature that people have been wanting for a while is a new grouped notifications on the lock screen and in the notification center. Now all the notifications automatically group together from each app showing you the newest one on top, and they let you expand or show less for each app. It's a really nice way to organize them. The old way never bothered me personally, but I've read a lot online about how people want them grouped, so this should make many people quite happy. A new feature in iOS 12 that I'm really enjoying is a new ability of being able to use the live listen feature with your AirPods. To learn more about that, check out my video about iOS 12 and AirPods. It's a super handy new feature that I now use almost daily. Apple has also rebuilt some of the built-in apps for iOS 12, like the Stocks and Voice Memos apps giving them a new look, and even giving the Voice Memo app the ability to sync with iCloud Drive. These are welcome updates. And for those who like to use Siri often, there's a new shortcuts feature that lets users string together multiple actions that can be triggered by a single custom Siri request. This is something similar to what Google and Amazon are doing with their digital assistants from what I understand. I don't really use Siri that much personally, but I can imagine this would be quite a convenience for the people that do. There's also been some minor OS changes with iOS 12. When you want to force close an app on an iPhone 10, you no longer have to press a button to confirm the action. You can now just swipe up to see the app switcher, and then swipe up to close the app. No more having to press that red button in the corner. Another change I've noticed on iOS 12 with iPad is that they've made Control Center work just like it does on the iPhone 10 now. You have to swipe down from the top right corner to access Control Center. They've also changed its appearance a bit. Now it looks almost identical to the Control Center on iPhone instead of how it was in iOS 11 where they just made Control Center a narrow column on the right-hand side of the screen. I don't think the new implementation looks as nice or balanced as the old one, but it is more functional. Also, the app switcher has been made to work the same as the iPhone X on the iPad as well. Guess this new control scheme will be the way of the future. Personally, I find this easier as I'm an iPhone X user, but if you're currently a traditional iPhone user, you'll probably find the new iPad control scheme a bit confusing at first. But overall, I think it's a good change though, as I think all future iOS devices will likely use this control scheme moving forward. Some of the other big new features coming with iOS 12 are the new ability to have FaceTime group calls with up to 32 people and the new Screen Time app to help you monitor just how much time you spend using your iPhone or iPad. I think the group FaceTime feature is way overdue and will be very helpful, but I personally don't see the big deal about the Screen Time app. But I guess if you feel like you're addicted to using your device too much, it could be useful. Well everybody, those are what I feel are the bigger new features, changes, and updates coming to iOS 12. It's important to note that these observations are made using the iOS 12 public beta and are subject to change. I'll be sure to do a follow-up video when the final version of iOS 12 is released this fall if any big or exciting changes occur. Did I miss a change you're excited about? Which updates, features, or changes are you looking forward to? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to ring that bell and subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.